Hi, I'm Andy from Steinberg and I'm happy to be here at DV247 today to talk about seven of the new features that are included in Cubase 7. So on this website, uh, you'll find seven feature videos uh, that offer you some, some insights and also some tips and tricks into things like the new Mix console, the customizable new console that's in, inside of Cubase, uh, the new channel strip, the new plugins that are always included in new releases, um, things like the new chord track and chord and analyzer, the harmonizer, which allows us to harmonize audio and MIDI files, and a basic general overview of all the new exciting features that we've included in the box. So check them out. I hope you enjoy them. So there's a whole lot of new workflow enhancements. We've been working our way through on all of these different, uh, I guess, our segments on uh, a lot of the new features in Cubase. But I want to focus now on the control room mixer. Now the control room has actually been something inside of Cubase for quite some time, and we've been making small additions to it. But in this release of Cubase, there's actually quite a major addition to it. If we have a look now in devices, we can go to the control room mixer, and you'll see that the control room mixer has been completely redesigned. So it's a complete new user interface. So I'm going to click on signal level here, and you can see we've got quite a few new features with a great layout. If I go down here to my left-hand side, VSD connections, let's say you're using something like the UR828 or the, uh, any, any uh, multiple interface or multiple input and output interface, we can actually set up sends to each individual instrument. So the whole idea behind the, the control room is you no longer need a headphone amp or any sort of other external instrument to send routing signals to the individual performers in your studio or at home. So the whole idea behind the control room mixer is to use your laptop or your PC to get the perfect re recording environment for each individual artist or performer. So we set up VST connections uh, via our multi-input or output um, interface. And then we come to our control room mixer and we can control things like, or we can turn the sends on and off. We can talk about the source. So you've got the monitor mix, the external inputs. Where are they getting their source from? We can turn on or off the click track on each individual uh, track, which is quite handy. And then you've got things like surround sound, solo different channels. This is also interesting. So speakers. A lot of us work with different types of reference monitors. So we can set up outputs for each individual monitor and just control them with the touch of a button, say using the new, um, the new uh, mapping control surface feature within Cubase as well. But as we go down, you can see we've got a few different uh, features here. So we can control things like levels just by clicking on our mouse and moving it up and down. Um, signal level, click level, which is so handy. I mean, these small things make the world a difference if they're just at the touch of your fingertips when you're, when you're working with a mouse. And then if, as we hit play, you can monitor the performance listening level. So from a, I guess from a workflow point of view, it's been enhanced. But the other addition to that, of course, is this new feature here. So this is not a new feature, I guess. More so, it's a new layout inside of Cubase. So we, we always talk about professional users working inside of, uh, I guess, inside of massive studios and how efficient this is for their workflow because they don't need to use, you know, different mixes and everything. But for, for you guys at home that are sitting inside your bedroom, you got your mum in the next room, you want to put a massive guitar sound over the top of one of your individual channels, well, you don't have to mic your amp up because you could just come down here, find distortion, say VST amp rack, so we click on that, we load it up, this is only going to go to the guitar ascent. So we're still recording a clean signal to disk, so we can edit it afterwards. But for your own performance environment, you can select one of the great custom vintage amps. And of course, there's loads and loads of presets in there that you can work with as well. So let's say the guitarist wants the amp rack, the singer wants the vocals. So of course, we can just add, you can see here I've got RevX because I'm using a Steinberg UR28M interface which comes with this kind of stuff for uh, direct monitoring. So I just add a little bit of reverb over the top to make the singer comfortable. If I want, I can add some EQ and that sort of thing. And you can see control room sources there. We've got dim and talk back here as well. So in a nutshell, that's basically the new control room mixer, I guess, functionality. It's always been there, but now it's, I guess it's been tweaked um, to perfection.